and there is a task in this world that only you can fulfill. But in God's eyes, every believer is precious. There is already a unity in Christ. I will build my church. Famous words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why should you love your church and be an active member of it? What is the church anyway? 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 till 27. A long piece of scripture, but be patient with me. The body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts, and though all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body. Now the body is not made up of one part, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, cease to be part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I don't belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, cease to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has arranged the parts of the body, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lacked it. So there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with, with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is part of it. Unity. The church is one. We are one in Christ. There is the universal church. Uh, I call all the believers together. All the people that have ever lived, are living now, and will live, that are children of God, washed by the blood of the Lamb. All those people, all those believers together, they are the body of Christ. And also a local body. Your church, your cathedral, your ministry, your house group, that is also a body of Christ. And then you may say, well, that church over there, do you know what ideas they have? Or have you seen those people in that church, how they dance, or how they pray, and that music, all those things? If Christ says they are children of God, then you are one with them. Then it doesn't matter if you like them, if you agree with them. But if they are children of God, then you are one with them. Because in Christ, there is unity. And they, those people, they are your brothers, your sisters. For first of all, the unity is spiritual. Not because we agree or that we look like one another, but because there is a spiritual unity in Christ. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3 till 6. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit. Just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. So everyone who builds upon the accomplished work of Jesus Christ is a Christian, is part of this body. And this unity we don't have to accomplish this unity, to work this unity by forming, by building a big organization, one big denomination. And all the churches in the whole world, they must be part of this organization. Then we have a bishop or a cardinal, we have another uh, group of leaders, another leader, another leader, another leader. No, no, that's not the unity that God calls unity. That we have the same building, the same rules, the same addresses, the same universities. That's not the unity that God 
wants to see in our church. That's a human unity. The Gospel of John, chapter 17, verse 20 and 21. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them be may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. So unity is already there in Christ. Just as the Father and the Son are one, so all believers, all of us, we are one. There's always already a unity in Christ, not by human effort, because we are working hard, we are toiling, we are doing all our best to become one, one organization, we look like one another. No, 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 no. Because the Holy Spirit in this, is in us. That's why we are one. And we may be different. There are big differences between churches, how they behave, their ideas. But all believers together, they are already one. There is already a unity in Christ. Do you believe that? Diversity. Our unity is not in the fact that we are all the same. We are not made identical. There are differences among between members of the church. Just like in a body, the different parts, they have a different function and they function different. They are different. They have, don't have to be the same. And many churches have the tendency after some years that all the people, they look alike. The way they dress, the way they walk, the words they speak, what they eat, their taste, their culture, they all become identical. I remember this church. This uh, pastor, he was bold, he had no hair. And after, we, after a few years, all the leaders were bold. Even though some had a lot of hair, they shaved themselves bold. Or this other church, all the leaders, they had the same kind of uh, suit, uh, some kind of... Uh, pastel color with uh, fillings in their shoulder. Sundays, you would recognize the, the leaders. Oh, he is from that church. He is from that church. Or another church, all the ladies, they look alike. Same kind of dress, same head, same heels, the same way they walk. That's fine, but it's also a warning sign. Be careful because you are becoming one, not in Christ, but because all the people, they are forced to become one, to become identical. Now people, we need the differences in the church. And I understand that we are attracted to people that look like us. They speak the same, they have the same culture, the same income, the same kind of profession. They look like us, they behave like us, they have the same values. And we feel, oftentimes we feel not comfortable with people that are not like us. But in the church, in a healthy church, we need this diversity. People must be different because they are different members with different functions. And then maybe you think, so I must be different. But this brother, this sister, is an example for me. So I must be different. No, but you can use other people as an example. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. You don't have to become the same like your brother and sister, but you can use them as an example. Of course, when you see your brother praying, you say, well, maybe I can learn something from him. Or this sister has this character. I can learn from her. They can be your example, but you're supposed to be different, not out of defiance or rebellion. You know, those people, when I say yes, they say no. When I say, let's go there, they say no. Those people, they want, to, they want to show you, I am different. I have freedom and nobody tells me what to do. No, that kind of attitude, that's rebellion. That's against God. But our diversity in the church, that is our strength. And God made you unique. And there is a task in this world that only you can fulfill. But you have to protect, you have to guard your uniqueness. Precious, every believer, every Christian is precious in the eyes of God. Just like in your body, you have members of your parts of your body that you don't see, but still they are precious, they are valuable. 
In the same way it is with us believers, we Christians. Those people that you notice, the pastor that preaches every Sunday, he is of course valuable. That lady that sings in the choir, the musicians, they are important. But also this lady that you never notice, you never see her. But every evening she goes on her knees and she prays for those people in need. Oh, this man, you hardly know him. But every Friday evening, he goes to this lady that has no one. He brings her some comfort and he brings the presence of God there. And then she's glad she has the joy of the Lord again. Now in our human eyes, some people are more precious. That brother, that sister that you see every Sunday, he is precious. He's valuable in the eyes of God, of course. But that sister that you hardly see. Now, we people have these kind of groups. We put people in these kind of groups. But the kingdom of God has its own rules. In the eyes of God, every member is precious. We want to reject it sometimes. We don't know the rules of God. But in God's eyes, every believer is precious. In your eyes too?